Hey guys, it's Double from Tennis House. Today I will go through the approach shot and what you have to keep in mind that is very important when the ball gets short. What options you have, where you can hit the ball, what your body is doing and what your racket is doing. As always, if you like what we do, please take a moment to subscribe and turn the notifications button on. Share the video or our channel with some friends and if you have five minutes, this is the video for you if you're struggling coming in. All right, guys, so let's start with the first scenario. Here we go, I'll put it in slow-mo again. Actually, let's put it in real time. Here we go. So I prepped the point good with the kick serve out wide and I finished the point with the inside in. So too many times when I see recreational tennis, it doesn't have to be the kick serve, obviously, in recreation tennis. It's going to be tough to hit that one. But if you have someone pushed out and you get a short ball like this, too many times the players now let the ball drop too low. So when you look where I contact the ball, remember, as closer you get, here's my contact point, as closer you get to the net, as shorter the ball is going to travel, all right? From here, I'm going to have this distance. If you hit the ball from far back here, you have a longer way the ball is traveling. So when you get closer to the net, what you don't want to do is to overhit the ball. And especially, you know, in uh, like man do that in recreational level, like 2 5 3 oh, 3 5 4 hours even, they tend to hit the ball too hard up there. And um, in junior tennis, it happens just so much. So when you look at my contact point, which is right there, I contact the ball around shoulder level, you know, in this moment, like the ball is going to travel more linear. And that's what you, when you get into the court, you want to keep the ball as simple as you can, linear through. You do not need the ball to spin the ball. That's what a lot of players do. They get closer to the net and they're still hitting up on that ball. That's why the ball most of the time sails out. So if you get very close to the net or closer... Make sure your stroke is more uh, linear. It has, still has some top spin, but not as much. And, uh, the, yeah, the biggest problem, what happens is I hit the ball up here and too many players in this situation would have not moved the feet good enough and the contact would have been low and they would have hit up on that ball and the ball would have gone up. So that's one of the things that I see so much in uh, recreational tennis. So when you get close here, you just go through that ball. So let's watch the second point. Again, kick serve out. I get my opportunity short. And in this scenario, what I want to point out is that, you know, I kick the ball out. If you hit inside out before that, before getting the short ball, that's good enough, right? So I move quick enough to the ball. So in this scenario, I have two ways. I can go there or I can go there. That's my, my option. I pick the cross court, kind of cross court right here. And if you pay attention to um, this moment here, my belly button points to the right. And when I'm done with the shot, I turn totally around. My belly button points to the left. This is one thing. If you want to control the ball, and if you st see here, I'm very low. And that's my head. And I stay that low. I just, for the shot, I go up a little bit. And... You need to make sure you lower your center of gravity. So if you stay low and commit the whole body into the shot, you're going to be able to control that one. Too many players in this situation isolate the lower body and they basically hit only with the upper body, only with the upper body. And that's when you neglect the legs, you're not going to be able to hit the ball. So you see how I'm loading and I'm using my legs and my whole body momentum shifts forward and I go through the ball. So you have to engage the whole body on the short ball and you have to for sure stay low and lower your center of gravity. As you see here, I stay low and I go to the open court and I follow the ball in. All right, the next scenario, what I like to see more often is when you watch players, so I'm serving it to the middle, regular point, I'm back in the game, and then I get the short ball. And how many players would now just crank the ball, hit the ball so hard and miss it? Too many, right? So when I zoom a little bit in, 
look how far my opponent is at the back here. That's that's good, like 10, 12 yards, even more to the net, the distance he would have to run if I drop it, right? So even on hardcore, it doesn't matter. Look, I fake the forehand here. That's what you need to do. Fake it until you make it. And then I change, and my drop shot is not good. It's very high, as you see here. And the opponent is so far back that he does not get to the ball in time. I would like to see, even on recreational level, faking this moment here, as you see, I fake the forehand. He's buying it. And too late in the last moment, he sees that I dropped the ball. And it's not even a very good drop shot, and I still win the point. And the surface does not matter. I tell my players that if it's hard court, if it's clay court, if you hit the drop shot at the right moment and disguise it, you're going to have a good time because you're going to win more points. So instead of hit, over hitting the ball here, I'll drop it. I want to see that more from recreational players. And the last video, I want you to pay attention to where I close in. That's the next thing you need on the approach shots. I get the short ball, first win the rally. You know, you have to set your point up. And now I get the short ball. And what I want to point out is, first of all, when you look at the pros, when they come in, they win 70% of the points, right? And when they stay at the baseline, they're barely around 45, 50, the best players. I just want to point that out. Go to the net. So I get the short ball. When the ball, if you divide the ball in three parts, the court, if the ball bounces somewhere in the middle, you're free to come in there to the ed side or to the do side. Because when you close in afterwards, you have a good court coverage. If the ball would bounce in the outside thirds, I recommend to come in down the line and close in there because then you can cover the court the best way. I just wanted to point that out quickly in this video. So when the ball is in the middle, you're free to go down the line, like to the ed side or cross court. If you're in the outside thirds, I would avoid going cross court because from here, let's say you go over there, this whole court is open on this side. All right, so let's go back to this point. Watch where I close in. That's very important. So I hit the ball there, and I follow my ball in. So if I would have hit in the moment here the ball cross court, I would have followed my ball in cross court as well. So here I follow the ball and split. And with your presence and pushing forward in the presence at the net, you put pressure on the opponent. And most of the times they actually overhit or they miss the ball. So you win around, if you're a good player, you should win around 70% at the net coming in. And um, yeah, so those are the very important points when, when you uh, come in. So let's get recap again. When the ball is very um, short, you have a shorter distance for the ball to travel to the other side. So don't overhit. You can hit a drop shot. Don't be shy. And uh, you have a more linear swing path. You put a little bit of topspin on there. But uh, in this case, for example, the ball is lower, so I had to hit more up. So if you can, you try to catch the level, the ball around shoulder level, and then you go more through the ball. And, yeah, come to the net, practice that. No matter which level you are, you're going to be su more successful in your game. And as always, if you like what we do, please take a second and subscribe to our channel. And, yep, share the video with some friends. And thank you for the continuous support. I really appreciate that, guys. And I wish everybody a great day.